But having your, your collar, leash, and your harness ready, ready and, and good to go, ID tags. So important, ID tags and microchipping. Um, and it, it's just, I'm amazed at the people that take their dogs out in public that don't have any sort of identification on them. I think that I, I, having ID tags, current ID tags, are extremely important along with microchipping. Um, we're going to talk about the usefulness and, of crates and using crates as a, as a really fantastic management tool. Um, having toys, the right type of toys, um, uh, appropriate food, having the bowls, puppy proofing your home. So when you're bringing a new puppy or a dog into your environment, it's setting them up for success by having your environment, uh, <laughs> having your environment work for you, not against you. And that means that the clutter is gone. The things that your dog could get into and hurt themselves or eat, your stuff, um, is, is not within their, <laughs> is not within their reach. Introducing a dog to resident animals. So um, a couple of the things that I recommend is that the, the initial introduction is not done within the home environment. And when you're doing the introduction, it's done outside at a neutral location. The dogs are on leash and there's plenty of high value treats there. So that from the moment they see each other, good things happen to each dog. Scent exchange, I want to mention that. And that's something that I found to be really successful in helping animals to get used, used to each other. If you have the ability to um, have your dog, your resident dog, uh, wear a bandana for a couple of days, the dog you're planning to adopt should be wearing, if you can, have them wearing a, a collar or a bandana and you can switch them right before they meet. So that when they come up and meet each other, they already smell familiar. You can do that with beds as well. If you can exchange the dog's beds so that they have an opportunity to smell each other um, before they meet, um, that can sometimes help have them, the, the initial meeting can go a lot smoother because scent is something that's so important to For dogs. Cats and dogs? I mean, yeah, like so um, uh, I think it's, it's the, the, the best suggestion is that we want to make the cat feel safe. So if the cat feels safe, the cat won't run. And if the cat doesn't run, <laughs> the, dog doesn't chase the dog won't chase it. <laughs> and I think what happens is the cat gets spooked, it runs, the chase instinct or the prey drive clicks on in the dog and things bad. <laughs> bad things can happen at that point. Um, so it's, it's management. It's um, maybe putting up baby gates so that the cat has a place that the dog cannot get to. Um, and it, when the dog and cat are in the room together, perhaps the dog is on leash. We're treating the dog, or we're giving the dog something to chew on, we're giving the dog another focus other than focusing so much on the cat. And it depends on the individual dog. Sometimes, sometimes it goes really smoothly, they adjust really well, um, and other times we need to help the puppy or the dog adjust to the fact that the cat's not a toy. And we have to do lots of redirection. But I think the most important thing is that the cat is safe. 